Hello and welcome to the basement. You might remember this little Macintosh SE here next to me. I did a video on it where we tried to find out why the keyboard and mouse weren't working and why it wasn't booting off the hard drive. Well, good news, it's been about a month and it's been booting off the hard drive fine ever since I got the keyboard and mouse working again. Now to get the keyboard and mouse working, I just bypassed a filter which had blown and short circuited inside. I haven't had any issues with it. As you can see, it's just running its screensaver at the moment and uh, everything seems to be working fine on that machine. So what I wanna try and do today is replace the filter. So I've got a couple of them here. Um, I ordered two in case I stuffed it up and um, I'll put that back in the machine to replace the little bodgy fix that we did to get it going. And the other thing I wanna do is try and work out a way of getting all the information off this hard drive, specifically all those old games and things that we found on there. So I wanna eventually put a SCSI to SD type device in here and get rid of the hard drives because in time that hard drive will eventually fail. Um, it has been working fine, fingers crossed. It will continue to work while we try and get the data off it, um, but eventually it will fail. Now the issue is it's a SCSI hard drive, so it's not just a matter of pulling it out and throwing it in a dock and getting that information off. Um, I don't have anything that will interface with a SCSI hard drive. So what I'm planning on doing is either using a zip drive, I've got a couple lying around. Um, I'm not sure if I have a SCSI one, which I'll need to uh, talk to this machine, or uh, this is the most likely option. I'm gonna try and network this machine to another machine and copy that data over. Um, again, I'm not sure if that can be done either, but we'll find out together. So without any further ado, I'm gonna click my fingers and we'll jump ahead to where I've already installed this filter. You don't wanna watch me pulling this machine apart again. Um, there's plenty of that footage in the previous video. Uh, so let's go. Oh, I don't think that worked. Oh, I don't think that worked either. Ah, wrong hand. Ah, yes, stupid. Ah, sorry, I obviously didn't jump forward far enough in time. Let me try again. Okay, well, I think we're in the right time in the future. Ah, uh, yes, here's the Mac. So I'll flick it on and hopefully our fix worked. If you have the same issue with this ADB um, chip blowing and the uh, mouse and keyboard not working, I'm gonna put a link in the description to where I found that part. It took me quite a while to find that part and um, thankfully somebody on one of the groups I'm part of helped me out and gave me that link. So I'll make it available in case you've got the same issue and you've spent days searching for the correct piece to solder in to get your Mac working, um, I'll make that available for you to save you that time. But it uh, looks like everything's working. I can't get over how fast this thing boots. It, uh, it just boots right up. It's probably faster than my 2017 iMac. But um, anyway, we're good to go. The next thing we want to do now is try and get the data off this hard drive and onto a, another hard drive so that we can have a backup. Now, I'm not too sure how we're gonna do this because uh, I'm certainly no expert when it comes to networking and certainly uh, I know even less about networking these old Macs. But um, that's never stopped me in the past not knowing how to do something, so let's have a go. The first idea I had was to try and use a zip drive because you can get zip drives which are SCSI and you can connect them to a SCSI machine like this and use the zip disk and put it into a USB zip drive and copy the data that way. Um, so I found this Zip 250 and I was quite excited because on the back you can see that it has a funny looking port there and I was getting quite excited because I thought that that was a SCSI port. Um, but it turns out it's not a SCSI port at all. It's just a proprietary interface for a PCMCIA adapter for this drive. So it's USB only, not gonna help us to connect to this Mac. Uh, but thankfully, the other thing I have is this. It's a, just a serial cable, I believe, and it plugs into the back of the Mac. And the other thing it will plug into is this. So this is my PowerBook 540C. On the back of this is the same serial port. So we're gonna hook them up serial to serial uh, and see if we can copy the data that way. And then what, I hear you ask? Well, the data will be stuck on this computer then instead of this computer. 
thankfully I've also got this Asante friendly net ethernet adapter which also will plug into the back of this and hopefully gives us ethernet which we can then get into a more modern computer with Wi-Fi and we can get it onto my home server. So um, that's the plan. Uh, there's about a million things that can go wrong with this plan. First of which being I've got no idea what I'm doing but uh, let's have a go and see how far we get and see if we can get the data off that hard drive. Okay so we've connected this Mac here to this Mac here via the serial cable and you can see on the screen this machine's running system 6.0.8 and this machine's running system 7.5. I'm hoping that's not going to be too much of an issue um, that they still are able to talk to each other and transfer files. So the first thing we want to do in this machine is to go to the chooser and um, select Apple Share. So if we go up here we can go to chooser And, and this is what's a bit strange, there's no Apple Share in this menu. There should be something in this menu here that says Apple Share. If we go to this one, um, this is a much later version, it's got a lot more things to choose from. But uh, you'll see in the chooser we've got Apple Share that we can select and um, we can select a file server. So we want to be able to do that on here and to be able to see each other. Um, Apple Talk has to be active on both, which it is. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of investigation and find out why doesn't this have Apple Share on it. So I've done a bit of digging around and on this machine it seems like it has a very minimal install of um, the system folder and it's missing any sort of network features. So we're going to need to get them on here so that we can obviously talk to the, this other computer here. So what I've had to do is find a copy of uh, Mac OS 6.0.8 and I've written it to a floppy so there's a there's two floppies here um, this has most of the system files on it this has sort of the extras and stuff it's it's quite amazing isn't it um, back in the day what this is about 1989 this came out your entire operating system just fits on a 1.44 megabyte floppy so anyway we'll throw that in Great, so here we are at system startup disk and what we're going to do is double click the installer and I want to do a custom install and um, just install the network features that are missing. So here we are in the Apple installer, uh, let's continue and we'll select to customize. Right, so here we want uh, Apple Share and we want software for Apple Talk Responder. So let's install this one. All right, let's continue and let's install software for Apple Talk Responder. I don't know what that does, but uh, it's got the word Apple Talk in it, so we might need it. Let's install that. All right, it's asking for the second disk, so we'll put that in. Oh, that's a bad noise. Did it work? Yes. And the old disk swapping routine. That is one small problem. Oh no, didn't read it. Let's try it again. And you can see this machine's had some custom sounds uh, installed. There we go, just needs a bit of a throw in there for it to work. Great, so let's continue. And I'm gonna eject this disk. So let's restart. Okay, we've got an extra icon here. It looks like a network kind of icon. So hopefully that's worked. Now if we go into Chooser. Great, Apple Share's there. So let's select Apple Share. And we can see the Macintosh 540C. That's what I've named this machine here. And we can see it. So let's select that as a file server connect to the file server as a, uh, a registered user I suppose. The name of the computer it doesn't have a password. Great. So we'll use Macintosh HD. Uh, 
and it looks like we're connected. So we have a desktop icon right here um, which says Macintosh HD on a network and it's pointing I believe to this one here. So let's go inside and have a look at that. Yeah great, so this is the hard drive on this machine. What I'm hoping we can do is because we can access this hard drive I can just create a folder in here and just copy everything into that folder um, and then it's on this machine and then we can try and network this machine to a recent machine. So let's try that now. Okay, so we seem to be able to create a folder fine. Let's open that up. Um, and I'm tempted just to drag the entire thing over and see what happens. Uh, why don't we just try it, I guess. Disks can only be moved onto other disks. Uh, okay, well, let's go inside the disk and Let's just copy the folders. The most important ones I want, of course, are the games. Uh, it's probably a faster way to do this, but I don't know what it is. Yep, that's worked. Now you can see it's a pretty slow sort of an operation, but certainly a lot faster than trying to burn things onto floppy and copying the floppies over. So as you can see, it's quite powerful for networking. Um, these, all these Macs had this Apple Talk built in and uh, provided just connecting between two computers like this, you can be file sharing without any kind of trouble. I mean, I'm no genius and I've uh, worked it out um, just from clicking around and trying to find the right software. And, and once it's there, it just works. It just sees it and it works and, and everything's copying fine. Um, and it's, yeah, it's quite astounding to me because networking can be a lot harder. Uh, than it needs to be sometimes I think and this seems to be just be working I mean sure it's not fast uh, but it is working and it's working fine okay while this is copying I'll just explain a bit more what I had to do on this computer here to make it work uh, if we go into the control panels and under sharing setup this is where I started the file sharing so that's what turned this machine into a server that this machine was able to see so just under sharing setup you um, select file sharing and that says start so you click start and then all you do is you go to the uh, folder or drive that you want to share so I clicked on Macintosh hard drive and I went to uh, somewhere in here sharing and then you get to select all your sharing uh, features here and once you've set that up um, this machine can see that file server, can see any any um, drive or any folder that you've made available to share and just sees it as a server on this side. So really easy, um, but just thought I'd show you what you need to do on the uh, server side of things to get it to work. Okay, so everything's copied over. It, uh, it actually took about two hours, so it's certainly not a speedy process, but uh, like I said, it's quicker than doing floppy swapping. Here it is my folder, which I've been copying everything to. And you can see uh, the same file. So this is actually seeing what's on here. Um, so we don't need this anymore. It's done its job. So I'll shut this down. I'll get the other Mac we're gonna use and connect it up and we'll see if we can get it now from here to a modern machine. Okay, we've swapped the little Macintosh SE for a mid 2012 MacBook Pro 15 inch. And this will do our job perfectly um, because it has of course a uh, built-in Ethernet jack there, so no dongle town. One of the best features of these older laptops is of course the I.O. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to use this here. And this is a Asante friendly net um, adapter. So it's got this funny plug on here, which is gonna plug into the back of this old machine and convert it to Ethernet. We've got the light on there, so that's a good sign and I'll plug that in and we'll plug it here into the Mac. Okay, so as you can see, slight change of plan. Um, I've got the duo out um, because I'm having trouble. I think maybe the OS on the MacBook is too new and I'm trying to do too big a jump um, between generations. 
um, I can't quite get them to talk to each other and the info I can find on the web tends to imply that I need to have open transport for this to work over the Ethernet uh, as a, a TCP connection um, and I think this machine does have open transport on it however I have no uh, Ethernet interface for the Duo so I've got to try and get open transport from here onto here and then use the Ethernet interface I have for this machine to then talk to the later machine. Does that make sense? Probably not. Um, I'm confused myself. Okay, plan C. Um, the We weren't getting anywhere with the Duo, although it was a good excuse to get it out. I love that Duo. It's probably my favorite machine out of my entire collection. Um, but I've got my titanium um, PowerBook here running 9.2 and I'm hoping 9.2 it can still talk Apple talk so that these guys can talk to each other over the Ethernet connection which they both have uh, and once I've got the files on here I can just use a USB stick and get it off that way okay it looks like it's worked um, they've seen each other over the Ethernet connection they're both talking um, Apple talk and we see the file server here 540c so let's join that and our name is oops 540c Connect. And yes, we'll use the hard drive. Great. We're connected. It's here on the desktop. We're going to be able to copy the files over and then I can put them on a USB stick, um, back them up and put them on a file server. So uh, it's been a convoluted sort of a process. Um, but now that I know the, <laughs> the correct steps to go, uh, maybe in the future I'll be able to do it a bit easier. Without any further ado, I'm going to copy all the stuff over the connection from here to here, put it on a drive and then throw it on my server where it's nice and safe. Okay, so our folder copied successfully and now I'm just going to plug in a USB stick. So um, I'll just copy these over and uh, we'll wrap up the video. So we were able to get the files from the SE onto the 540 and that was relatively painless once I had the correct software running on this machine that was able to network and they could see each other. Just This just came up straight away and we could transfer that data over the serial cable. And then we tried to get it from here to a much more modern machine running OS X and we were having no luck. I was pretty sure that the Ethernet connection was working but I don't think the version of OS X I'm using actually can talk Apple Talk. So, uh, I went to the next best step and I used this titanium um, PowerBook running OS 9.2 and that can talk Apple Talk and it has a USB port on it so we could do the same thing talking from this one to this one using that Ethernet adapter um, and it was a lot faster we got the information onto here and ultimately onto this USB stick now what is the purpose of all this well there is no purpose, it's entirely irrelevant. I was just interested to know, could it be done? Could I get the files from 1989 right through to 2021? Could, it, could I do it? And yeah, uh, it's convoluted, but yes, it's possible. Do I recommend it? No, no, just download the files that you need from Macintosh Garden or Macintosh Repository from the web, um, throw it in an emulator, uh, or put it on an SD card in a SCSI to SD device. Uh, but like everything we do in this kind of old tech collector kind of space, it's all irrelevant. It has no actual useful purpose really, uh, other than a bit of nostalgia and a bit of fun. So I hope you've enjoyed that video, um, a bit of a deep dive into networking uh, from 1989 through to 2021. You've been in the basement. See you next time.